Hi boys and girls, thanks for being with us today. We're back in our Sunday school classroom and ready to learn another story from the Bible that Mrs. Niedermeyer is going to share with us. I believe it's about Abraham today. So before we start, let's bow our heads and close, close our eyes and we'll open in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time again where we can meet together, we can learn more about you. Help each one of us to um, try our best to do what you want us to do, that we'll trust you, that we'll obey you, that we'll obey our parents, which when we obey our parents, then we're obeying you. We just pray that you'll be with us this, this day, help us to have a good day, and thank you for all the things that you've given to us and the safety that you've given to us over these past months. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, boys and girls. Thank you for joining us again today. It's always great to see you on Sunday morning. Today we are going to begin our lesson with something called, a little game called Get Up and Go. So sometimes you've probably seen a race, a race where some people will say, ready, set, go, and then you'll both take off running as fast as you can. So today I have a few of these cards that I have directions on and I want to read them to you. And when I do that, you are going to go do that activity as quickly as you can and then come right back so that you can listen to the next one. All right, ready? You're going to, when I tell you to, go to the closet window, closest, sorry, the closest window, I couldn't read my writing, the closest window in the room you're in right now and then clap your hands three times. Ready? Get up and go. All right, are you back? Good job, nice job of following directions. Now the next thing you're going to do when I tell you to is you're going to go to the closet, the closest closet. Maybe there's a closet in your room or maybe there's a closet right outside the room you're in and you're going to count to 10. Ready, get up and go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Are you back? That's awesome. Great job of obeying those directions. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you, when I tell you to get up and go, you'll move, but not before then. You're gonna to go to a wall in the room you're in right now and jump up and down five times and then come back. Ready, get up and go. Ms. Pam, I don't see you jumping. I, I was gonna go, but I would jump off camera. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome back. Well, great job of doing get up and go. That is an important part of our lesson today because when I asked you to do something, I hope you did it and I hope you follow the directions and did them exactly like I asked and you did them as soon as I asked you to do them. If not, I don't know, but that you didn't, you didn't get up and go. Today we're going to begin our story, which is in the Old Testament in the book of Genesis, and it is going to be about Abram, and we are going to find out some things about him. Now, I have a question for you before we begin. I want to tell you that there was a man, and he had three sons, and his sons, the man's name was Terah, and the three sons' names were Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. And right now we're going to talk about Abram, and he was a man, a boy, these three brothers, they lived and they grew up in the city of Ur. Isn't that a funny name for a city, Ur? They grew up there and in that city of Ur, those people worshiped idols. Now, if you remember what an idol is, it is something that people worship other than God. We know that God is the true God. He is the only God and he is the only God that we should worship and believe and trust and learn about. But some people even, even worshiped the sun, they thought that was a God and they would pray to the God of the sun, which we know that is not true. But people in Ur, they would build idols, they make things out of wood or stone and they would come and pray to them. It is not what God told them to do and God was not pleased by that. So these three boys, they lived there and as Abraham grew up, he got married as many people do and his name of his wife was Sarah. It's a pretty name, isn't it? So Abraham and Sarah lived together in the city of Ur, but God one time had some plans for him and he said he wanted to tell Abraham what these plans were. So in just a minute, Miss Pam is going to read something. And Joelle, I want you to think about and be able to see if you know the answer to this. What was God going to tell Abraham to do? What did he tell him to do? And Miss Pam's going to read Genesis 12, 1. The Lord had said to Abram, leave your country, your people, and your father's house 
and go to the land I will show you. All right, so Joeli, did you hear what God was telling him to do? That's right, he was telling him, he was going to, he wanted Abraham and his wife to pick up from where they were living and move away to a land that he was going to tell them about. He was gonna tell them where to move. Now, I don't know about you, but if somebody came home to me today and said, you've gotta pick up everything you own and move today or move very soon, I'd be very sad. But Abraham and Sarah were obedient to God. They trusted God and they had faith in God. So they did exactly what they were supposed to do. Now I was thinking if I was going to have to move or if I was going to have to take a big long trip, I would have to do a lot of packing. And so today I packed up a few things that I thought, well, if I was going to go on a long journey or if I was going to move, what are some things that I would wanna make sure that I would bring with me? Well, one thing would be, I would wanna bring some more, my clothes. I'd have to pack up all of my clothes and I definitely would want to bring my Bible because wherever I go, the most important thing is that I always am studying God's Word so I know what to do. So I would bring my Bible. Uh, I probably would bring things like towels and washcloths because everybody has to take a bath or a shower, right? We don't want to be clean, stinky. We want to be clean. So I would bring those. And then I'd probably have to bring, and it depends on where I was moving to, but I'd want to bring some shoes. Or if I was moving down south, I might want to bring some flip-flops. I'd want to make sure I bring those. And then, of course, I would definitely want to bring some food, some snacks. Definitely, that would be my favorite thing to bring because I love food. And of course, I would want to bring my toothbrush. And then there's one more thing that I would want to bring. Just a minute, it's over here. I would probably want to bring a pi some pictures of my friends and here's my fa my daughters. I'd want to bring some pictures of people that I was moving away from. If I was moving, I might want to bring a picture of Miss Pam so that I remember that. So there's a lot of things that I would have to pack up. I'd have to go to each room, pack up all of my things and move. Well, Abraham was a man that had many things already, but he decided because he had faith in God that he was going to do exactly what God told him to do. He was going to get up and he was gonna go and move to the land that God told him. So they did that. He didn't know where God was sending him yet. God had not told him that, but he trusted God and he did exactly what he was supposed to do. Now, uh, Miss Pam, could you read? Oh wait, before we do that, let me show you this picture. So this is a picture of a little bit. So he had to pick up, he had to pack up his wife, Sarah had to pack up her things and then, the servants that he had and his relatives came with him. He had to bring all of his animals and he had probably had some camels and maybe some cattle. He had to pick up all, take all his animals with him and make sure that he had food for the animals as well and water and all of those things. So he had a big job ahead of him. And so as he walked and walked along, you know, God had some promises for him. And Miss Pam, could you read? Genesis 12 verse 2 and Moriah I want you to count and see how many of these promises God made to him in these verses it says I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you I will make your name great and you will be a blessing okay so how many was that Moriah that's right four promises in that verse that God made to Abraham, do you think God kept all of those promises? Do you think, Jaden, that God kept all of his promises to Abraham? Yes, you are exactly right. God did keep his promises because God always keeps his promises. So they had to walk along and they had, can you imagine how hot it was? It wasn't like they had a car to travel in. And some of you in your cars, when you travel for a long time, you have air conditioning and you have cup holders so you can have a water bottle and you have snacks. And let's see what else. Some of you even probably have video camera, video things that you can watch a video inside while you're traveling. So you have very luxurious travel, but they had to do a lot of sitting on donkeys and maybe camels, which are very bumpy and rough, not comfortable. Or they had to walk and walk and walk. And after walking for a very long time, Joanna, finally God told Abraham he had arrived in this land of Canaan. This is where God was going to bring him. So Miss Pam is going to read verse 12, 12 verse 7 
The Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. Joanna, did you hear what he did once he got to the land of Canaan? Once Abraham got there with all his family and all his cattle and all of his belongings, what did, was the first thing he did? That's right, he built an altar. And remember, an altar was they would take some big rocks and they'd put them and then they would sacrifice an animal on there. And they would do that oftentimes to thank God for the, his goodness. And that's what Abraham did. He built that, off, that altar for that reason. Now, Abraham had those four promises that he kept thinking about. And he kept thinking about one promise in particular. And one of those promises is, can you read verse two, uh, two again, 12 verse two, Miss Pam? I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. Yes, it says in there that God was going to make Abraham a great nation. Now a nation is made up of many, 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 many people. But guess what? Abraham and Sarah didn't have any children. So he kept thinking, if I don't have any children, how can I have a great nation? How can my descendants become a great nation? Because I don't even have any children. I'm not going to have grandchildren if I don't have children. So he was just wondering about that. And God did something with him. Um, would you read Genesis chapter 15, verse 5? One second here. And Actually, I'll read that if you want to do this. I want you to um, think of this verse. I'm going to read that. Miss Pam's going to do something. We're going to turn out the lights for just a minute because God made a promise to Abraham, and this is just such a cool thing because it includes a big number. And I want you to listen to it. Yep. I am going to read this when Miss Pam gets ready. So you listen. Let's see. Isaiah, it's your turn. I want you to see if you can figure out, after reading this verse, how many descendants, it means like children and grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren and great-great-great-great-great-grandchildren that Abraham was going to have. Genesis 15, 5. Okay. Then God brought him outside and said, Look now toward heaven. And count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. So if you'll see right now all those stars in the sky when you look up, you can't count them. Scientists think there might be 200 billion stars in the sky. But you know what? They don't even know for sure. We can't count them. And that's what God promised Abraham. He said, you are going to have as many descendants, which means, remember, children, grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren, great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-grandchildren, then all of the stars in the sky. So he was promising to make him a great nation. So when God promises something, does he always keep his word? He does. And so we're going to learn in just a little bit next week about how that happened. And I'm going to read Genesis 12, 3, because the last promise that God made is a very important one. It said, I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you, and you, in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And boys and girls, who is the person that died on the cross for our sins? That's right. It was Jesus. He was the blessing to all of the families that have lived back then, that live now, and that we're going to live in the future. He is the one that has blessed us, and because we can trust that Jesus Christ died for our sins, we can someday go to heaven and live with God up there in heaven. Isn't that a wonderful story? Now, next week, we're going to learn about how God really made this, this promise come true. And before we do that, Miss Pam and I are going to close, Miss Pam will close in prayer, and then we're going to sign off for today. Dear Lord, thank you again for our time together. Thank you for all the promises that you made to Abraham, and thank you that you fulfilled all of them, that they all came true, because as Mrs. Niedermeyer said, the promises that you make, we know that we can count on them, and we know that, they will, that, that you will do them. Thank you for the promises that you've given to us. Help us just to um, trust you and to know that you love us and that you will Help us through the things that we need to go through and that you just will do everything that is best for us in our lives. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
All right, so boys and girls, remember, God keeps his promises, and if you read the Bible and the Bible tells you something, you can believe that it's true. God loves you, and he will take care of you. All right, so we will see you next week, and have a good sunny week. See Bye. Ya.